Hi everyone, so I am here today for a little bit of a different video but one that I thought might be quite fun for both of us to film at least I've definitely had a lot of fun researching it, shall we use that word um, and I kind of want to share some of my findings with you, it's the academic in me, it can't be helped but as a way of explaining the entire concept of this video I will tell you a little story I was lying in my bed looking at a pile of books that I had taken off my shelves and trying to pick which one I wanted to read and naturally what I tend to do in that position is to go into Goodreads and scroll through reviews and read a few that are spoiler free to get a better idea of what I'm in for to indicate not only whether other people have enjoyed or disliked a book but what that book contains to give me a little bit more insight into what I can expect, what the tone of the book is, um, perhaps how central the romance is, if there's a romance, whether um, the characters are fully fleshed or if I should be expecting something a little bit dark and potentially depressing. And one of the books that I was reading the reviews of was The White Mare by Jules Watson. And in the end this was actually the book I decided to pick up because of a one star review. And this is something that's definitely happened to me in the past in that I have read somebody else's review of why they don't like a book and why they potentially hated a book and felt like, yep, that's the book for me. <laughs> and that's what happened here. So allow me to read to you the review which convinced me to pick this book up. It mostly sucked me in with the plot and then it let loose with the throbbing members and the round white heaving bosoms. I stopped reading at the first hint of pulsating penis because if I wanted to read a romance novel I would go read one, not a romance novel masquerading as historical fiction. So don't get me wrong, that person, perfectly entitled to their opinion, they want fantasy free of romance and therefore this book is not for them. However, I love historical fantasy romance and romance was exactly what I wanted from my fantasy in that moment. I had a big stack of fantasy books, like I said, in front of me that I was trying to pick from, but I wanted one that had a romance I could root for that could provide me with pure escapist romantic joy, which I find romance literature does. So when I read that review, my inner voice immediately spoke to me that yes, I wanted those white heaving bosoms in my life. So I decided to pick this book up. And it just made me curious about what other one star reviews out there might make me want to read a book. So I wanted in this video to take you through some of the one star reviews I have found on books I either have already read and enjoyed or have on my TBR and want to read that really cement the reason I want to read that book or enjoyed <laughs> that book and potentially will make you want to read that book because I know a lot of you have similar tastes to me. Some of them are a little bit like this first review I've just read to you where it is just a complete matter of opinion and there's absolutely nothing wrong with um, that reviewer giving the book one star. Although on the other end of the spectrum there are a few um, genuinely homophobic reviews from people who just couldn't cope with the fact that the book had lesbians in it but for me that's a selling point so yeah I thought I would take you through some of the reviews I managed to find, a few of which are rather funny and some of which are just very, very helpful if you're looking for your next read. So let's kick things off with another book which I haven't yet read but I read a few one star reviews of and was absolutely sold on. This first one I will not read the entire review to you because it is so long winded <laughs> but the very last few sentences are the ones that cemented my interest and those are the story revolves around the oyster girl which is Nancy King. She falls in love with women as she is a lesbian. The novel is actually about gays and lesbians. It is about the lives of lesbians. Great. Yes, please give me more. And that was, I should have mentioned, Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters, for which I have another review which reads, I didn't realise there were more lesbians in Victorian England than heteros. Honestly, I wish there were, and if this book makes it seem like there were, then yes, I want to read it. Moving on to a book that I have read, however, I wanted to read you this review from Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton, which simply states, this book read like a soap opera about dragons. I mean, for a review that is supposedly one star, that makes this book sound amazing. And to be perfectly honest, it's very accurate. So I guess if you don't want to read a soap opera about dragons, this book is not for you. But if you do and are like me, then this book is for you and I highly, highly recommend it. And to be honest, if I read that review for any other book I hadn't yet read, I would be immediately picking it up. Another book that I have already read, very much enjoyed and would recommend is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. And this first one star review reads, this book only talked in detail about the victims was not what I expected and did not enjoy it. I would like to point out that the subtitle of this book is The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper. So I'm not quite sure why this reviewer thought that it wouldn't be about the victims. 
<laughs> but given that that is what I wanted from this book, this review would have sold me if I hadn't read it already. Somewhat similarly, this second review reads, this book reads like a documentary. Too much detail. Each woman's story could have been told with a lot less minutiae. I love historical fiction, but this dragged. I'm not quite sure again if this reader was a little bit confused when they went into this because it is non-fiction, not fiction. So personally I would expect it to be a little bit documentary style and the fact that it held lots of detail is a good thing for me and me very well be for you as well. And then I have a book which I haven't read but I have read another book by this author in the past and it's Who's That Errol by Susanna Craig. So this is a historical regency romance novel by, like I said, an author who I've read historical romances by in the past. So I myself know what I'm getting from her books and it's a little bit like Tessa Dare, they're a wee bit smutty, they're quite comical and they are just absolute page turning adventurous regency romps. However, if I did not already know that, then this reviewer would have been incredibly helpful in my research because they stated that they quickly realised this was not clean at all, as in the romance, and that they gave up when it got smutty, which may not be for them, but definitely is for me. Then there were the reviews for The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk, which is a fantasy novel, although if you didn't already know that, you certainly would from this review, which is one star. I am not a huge fan of fantasy novels. Not sure why they picked this book up, but I love fantasy novels, so if a one star review was going to sell me on a book, it would be this one. But just one more to accompany that review in case knowing it's a fantasy novel is not enough for you. Uh, this one reads, either write a novel or a women's lib manifesto. I very much disagree. Personally, I think all novels should also be women's libs manifesto. Those two things should not be separate, they should always be combined, and therefore this book sounds like exactly what I want to read. Then I also wanted to include this review for Nama's Kiss by Jacqueline Carey, which is another one that I have read and very much enjoyed, although it was many years ago, and I really, really want to reread it because I have forgotten a lot of the detail. And this review actually reminded me of one of the reasons I loved it and what I might expect going into it, which is that it's all over the place. Literally, Act 1, Remote Forest Cave, Act 2, Big City, Act 3, Asian Snow-Capped Mountain, which to me sounds like quite the adventure, so I'm in. We then have the greatest number of reviews, I have to confess, for The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which might be because it's an incredibly popular book, so a lot of people have read it, including people, that it is not the book for, clearly, but I gave this book five stars, and some of the reasons that these one-star reviewers didn't like it are the reasons I did like it, so I had to include some of their reviews, or at least quotes from those reviews, because a lot of them are quite long. We First up, we have the very pithy description of more woke opera than space opera, which, I mean, why wouldn't I want to read that? That sounds brilliant. We then have this review, which, to be perfectly honest, is completely accurate. So if you don't like the sound of this, then don't read the book. But if you do, then it's brilliant. A crew of diverse, happy, happy species wander the galaxy in their happy, happy ship, taking comfort in their diversity and quirkiness and happy, happy camaraderie, <laughs> accomplishing almost nothing related to the plotline. But that's OK, because they're all super besties. <laughs> A lot of subtext and conversations revolve around the concept of being yourself or figuring out who you are at the expense of the actual story. I mean, you could argue against the point of at the expense of the actual story because I would say that is the actual story. But you know, that is otherwise a pretty accurate review and one that would make me want to read the book. <laughs> then there's this review which summarises the book as millennials in space. <laughs> I mean, as a millennial, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, this felt like a Mass Effect slash Firefly fan fiction written by a purple haired gender studies major. How is that a bad review? That sounds brilliant. This review then goes on for much longer, but honestly, if I was looking for reasons to read the book, I would stop there and just go read it. <laughs> and you will probably be noticing already there's definitely some thematic similarities in these reviews. The next one reads, Becky Chambers presents to us Firefly, the novel, via Tumblr and pop culture. And she is not ashamed to do it, because why should she? That sounds brilliant. I love Firefly and pop culture. <laughs> Long Way to a Small Angry Planet has everything someone raised on Joss Whedon's twee storytelling would enjoy. Found Family, the market scene from Firefly, these are all true. An AI love story that never gets into the hairier questions of sentience. Weird food, polyamory, and did I mention Found Family? I mean... Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Then there is, if you wanted to read about a lot of crying and hugging and discussion of feelings, then by golly, this book is for you. To be fair, this person knows that their review will sell some people in this book. <laughs> all the characters, save one, are the super bestest friends forever and all share their feelings and accept all their differences in the super nicest way ever. Yes, we all can get along. 
let's all have a group hug and cry it out. There, I feel so much better. <laughs> Honestly, is it just me who actually enjoys happy books? Although I will say, the characters do go through some stuff in The Long Way to Small, An Angry Planet, and not everything works out perfectly for everybody, but you know what? Yeah, there is an overall tone of things are okay, and that brings me joy, and I want that more in my books, to be perfectly honest. Why does every book I read have to feature heavily and focus on like toxic relationships and people treating each other like crap? Sometimes I want to read about people who are actually decent human beings or aliens, either is acceptable. So all of those reviews pretty much summarise the reasons I love The Long Way to Small Angry Planet, and if you think those sound good, then you'll probably enjoy it too, and that goes for all of the reviews I've mentioned in this video. I did spend a long time going through one star reviews for this video but obviously I wanted to specifically focus in on reviews that actually made me want to read a book or would have made me want to read the book if I hadn't already read it so that they may inspire you to go and read those books or add them to your TBR as well. If you enjoyed this video do let me know it was a little bit different but I really enjoyed doing the research for it and I would actually be super duper interested in hearing if you've ever read a one star review for a book or even just a two star review for a book that made you want to read it, that sold you, that told you something that meant you would probably like that book yourself even if the other reader didn't. Let me know what it was even if you can link the review that would be amazing and I will see you all again in the next one. Until next time happy reading, I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone!